Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well and thank you for watching this clip on quadratics. Today it's all about quadratics. Then this uh, part one of three series that uh, we're going to be working on in the next few uh, minutes. Uh, we're going to talk about all the pictures that come along with the algebra. Okay, so. Overall, there are seven pictures or seven graphs. You're going to be kind of reminds me of the Disney movie Seven Dwarfs. Okay. So, when we started, we have lines. I figure I'll give you an overview of where the quadratic fits overall. And then we're dealing with the quadratics, which is the topic of today. And then later on, we'll have conics is after the quadratics. After the conics, then we will have the next topic. Normally is polynomials. We're graphing a more complicated graph. After polynomials, most students encounter this uh, concept called rational functions. Curve looks like that. And then after that, you have the logarithms or exponentials. Okay. And then least but not the Last but not least is the trig. Okay, so let's give you an overview from Algebra 1 all the way to trigonometry. And there's about seven families of curves. Um, I went online and found this cute picture of the seven dwarfs. Here you have the dopey, the, the most awkward one, starting from lines all the way to dock which uh, symbolizes the trigonometry, I guess. The grumpy is the logarithm and the next one is the rationals and the sleepy is the polynomials and I think this is the bashful. I, get, I always get a bashful and sneezy confused because sneezy is supposed to have a finger under his nose but not in this picture. So one of them is quadratic and one of them is the conics. So as you can see conics is uh, coming after the quadratic. As you can see and there's a quite a bit of curves so you're going to uh, marching over across as you dig the diamond mine, like those seven dwarfs. All right, now back onto our math over here. It's so a quadratic. Quadratic has, unlike our lines, has only two points of interest because any lines contains just two points. With the two points, you can graph the lines. Quadratic, on the other hand, does need three points minimum. Okay, the three points of the interest are, those are what we call the roots, some people call it zeros, some people call it solutions of quadratics, it's all the same. All we're looking for, maybe you can even call it x-intercepts. Okay, so all, all it is, is where does the curve cross x-axis? There are cases where the quadratic doesn't cross x-axis, x -axis. okay, and now we'll, we'll talk about it as we go along the, this video series. Uh, another point that's very important is this point, that's vertex. Okay, So, giving the vertex gives you the minimum value or sometimes the maximum value of the curve looks like concave down, upside down. Here's the vertex as well. Okay, so what's the, what the big picture bird's eye view is what's really important for quadratic is find the roots and be able to find where the vertex is. Okay, so for next few minutes, like I said, let's talk about how do we find them. There's a good question here. Let's see, we have a f of x equal to 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. And then you might be wondering, why do I have a 2 in the front? The original question asked is actually solve for x if the equation looked like this. Okay, in order to solve this one, it's a quadratic and the function that we're looking for is where does the x equal to 0? Okay, so this is the part 1 where we find the roots, where we call it zeros, and solutions, or x-intercepts. Okay, they're all the same. Now, there are three methods to solve this one, and we're going to go through each one of them. Uh, actually, probably the first two I'll go through in this video series. The first one is, of course, factoring. And next one is quadratic equation, QUA, quadratic equation. And then completing square, we probably will cover in the next part. Q, U, A, okay. OK, 
Okay, so there are three methods we can find. Three methods. Okay, factoring is the easiest one. Not all quadratic can be factored, and quadratic equation can be used for everything. Uh, it's this big long hairy equation plus minus b squared minus 4ac. And when I'm te when I was teaching this. Uh, Algebra 2 class, I used to uh, make my student know where this quadratic equation come from. I put it on the test to say, can you derive it? A lot of students don't like that, but hey, no one ever forgets this formula again. All right, so let's do go through the method one, uh, factoring. What we have here is a relatively easy one to factor because the equation is given. Let's see if we can do this one. Okay, so factoring down here, we have f of x is equal to 2. We pull the 2 out, so x squared plus 5x plus 6. In order for this one to be 0, the reason we want to factor is this. Okay, this one trying to figure out what x make it that 0 is difficult. However, if we can factor it in that x plus 3, x plus 2, we find two set of number. When you multiply, you get 6. When you add, you equal to 5. This one, all of a sudden, multiplication likes zero because then we can see well if you want this whole thing equal to zero I can either have this equal to zero or I can have this equal to zero okay this one give you a simple solution of x1 equal to minus three or x1 x2 equal to minus two so we achieve the roots so minus two minus three and quadratic look like this oh it was offset a little bit so minus 2, minus 3, and it's concave up because the polynomial has positive uh, x squared term. All right. So from here, we found the roots. And now let's see, uh, next video series, we'll probably you let's go through using the second method, solving quadratic equation, which is quadratic roots. All right. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan making learning math fun. At least trying to. Please. Comment or thumb up if it has been helpful. And uh, see you in the next clip. Have a confident day.